you're a scientist on Earth whose laboratory is orbiting the planet at more than 17,000 miles per hour, you may think it's difficult to conduct experiments if you're not right there with the equipment. While the space station was in the first in its planning stage, a group of software developers at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, came up with a solution. My colleague Bill Hubscher has more from Huntsville. That group of software developers here at the Marshall Space Flight Center created the Telescience Resource Kit, or TREK, to help scientists around the world work on their experiments while ever leaving home. That same software could be used when humans start conducting science on Mars. To find out more, we're joined by Michelle Schneider. She is one of the software developers and the team lead for TREK. Thanks for taking the time to uh, join us this morning, Michelle. First of all, uh, tell us a story about how TREK was created. Sure. So I work at the Mission Operations Laboratory here at Marshall Space Flight Center, and we actually have a very long history um, in supporting payload operations. Um, prior to supporting the International Space Station program, we supported Space Lab missions, and Space Lab was a research facility that fit into the cargo bay of the space shuttle. And when scientists and engineers flew payloads or experiments on Space Lab, they would travel here to Huntsville, Alabama to uh, operate their payload in the Huntsville Operations Support Center. Um, and of course, Space Lab missions were a very short duration, though. They only lasted about seven to 10 days. Maybe towards the end of the program, they would go out to 20, 25 days, but still pretty short. So people could travel here. But when it came time to support the International Space Station program, we realized that wasn't going to be a feasible approach because, of course, space station payloads can operate for years at a time, so people really couldn't just uproot their lives and move to Huntsville, Alabama for years. So that's when we started working on the remote operations concept, the idea that people could stay at home to monitor and control their payloads. So there's a lot of very important software that runs here at the Huntsville Operations Support Center that makes remote operations possible. And the Trellis Science Resource Kit or Trek software is one part of that overall solution. And it's one of the products that we deploy out all over the world so payload teams can stay at home to operate their payloads. So Trek is basically just a suite of software applications and libraries that provide capabilities um, to monitor and control an asset on the ground or on a spacecraft. And this can be done from either their, their laboratories or, for that matter, from their armchairs. Absolutely. Or laptops. Absolutely. And they do it from both locations. Uh, it makes it very convenient because now they don't have to travel anywhere. They can stay in the comfort of home and, and take care of all of their operations work there. Well, what were some of the bigger challenges when it came to creating Trek? Well, one of them is that we originally started working on Trek in the 90s, and while the internet is something that's part of our everyday lives today, that was back in the beginning of the internet, and so a lot of the technology available at that time was still very new and not anywhere near as powerful as it is today. So one of the challenges was um, using software and hardware at that time to meet the needs of what we had to do to uh, work in a space environment. So you guys were kind of uh, pioneers uh, in and of yourself, yeah, something we take for granted, how easy it is to, to make connections on the Internet. You were trying to do that 20 years ago. We were, and it's <laughs> been great. We've grown up with the Internet right along with it. So uh, you've been helping scientists around the world, as I said, for years now, but now you're going to become one. You and your team actually have a technology demonstration on station right now. Tell us about that. That's right. We're super excited. We now have our own payload on the International Space Station. It's called the Trek Demonstration Payload, and it has a couple of purposes. One thing is, even though the Trek software was originally developed to be used as ground software, it turns out that the same function you need to do on the ground you also need to do in flight software with your payload on board space station. So now the Trek software is a standard software service on board the space station. So with the Trek demonstration payload, we're able to demonstrate Trek on both sides, on the ground and on board, and all the data flow that takes place in between and show all of its capabilities. Um, a second purpose, so uh, Space Station is now moved from the construction phase to the utilization phase, so science is our primary focus. So the program's been working very hard to roll out lots of new capabilities and services to make it even easier to fly and operate a payload. So the Trek demonstration payload is serving as the Pathfinder payload for many of these new services. So we're the very first payload on board to use these new services. Um, we are doing lots of performance testing to characterize how well the services work. 
and we're sharing that information with payload teams so that when they're going through the list of all the services available trying to decide which ones they want to use for their operations, they have a lot of information to make those choices. Now the beauty of your particular payload is that it was it was all electronic. You pretty much had to upload it, right? Right. We just uplo <laughs> uploaded the software. There was a laptop already on board. We installed it, and we were ready to go. And it's that simple. Can you tell me a little bit about the the new services that you're helping test with uh, the new the track demonstration software? Sure. One of them is called delay tolerant networking, and um, that's a really important um, new service. Um, you know, even though we're using things that uh, like standard network protocols that are used every day on terrestrial networks, when you get into a space-to-ground environment, it is a little bit different. For example, we don't have 100% coverage that we can communicate with the space station at all times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are data dropouts where we just can't communicate. Well, delay-tolerant networking provides ways to basically store and hold data until it gets communication again, and then it can go ahead and forward it. And all of that happens automatically. So what's cool is it gives payload teams the ability to automate their operations so they don't have to be there all the time monitoring. They can have software automatically doing that for them. Oh, fantastic. What about storage up there on the station? Yes, there's a new capability called Network Address Storage, or NAS as we call it. Um, you can kind of think of it as like a giant hard drive in a way. Um, <laughs> it's providing lots and lots of additional storage for payload teams so that as they generate data as part of their experiments, um, that's an extra place where they can store it. Um, it comes with something called a Dropbox, where you can have a folder on your local computer on the ground and you just drop files in it and they just automatically get uplinked and it works the same way going down. So that's a really cool feature that also helps support automation. Oh, fantastic. What do you see as the uh, future for Trek? Well, every day there's tons of new technology coming out and we're really looking forward to continue to enhance the product and to infuse as much of that new technology to make it easier and easier to fly payloads on station. Michelle Schneider, one of the pioneers for software development here at the Marshall Space Flight Center and the team lead for Trek. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, thank you for having me. If you'd like to learn more about Trek, they actually have a public facing website, yes. trek.msfc.nasa.gov. Just click on over there and you can learn more about it.